Well, my name is Dan Asano, and I, I've, um, I'm uh, 73 years old now, and I train in various different martial arts from Chinese, Japanese, uh, Korean, Okinawan, Indonesian, Filipino, Thai. A little bit in, uh, dabbled a little bit in the African martial arts, and I kind of like to study all the different martial arts. I haven't finished my training. There's a lot of areas where I really need to still work on. And uh, what brings you here to uh, Grand Light, Michigan? I, I'm today? doing a, a, a seminar for, uh, for Carl and his group here and some of my students here. And I'm going to center it mainly around the uh, John Fon martial arts, sort of the JKD, uh, Indonesian, and Malaysian and Filipino, maybe a little bit of Thai, and maybe uh, dab a little bit here in the shoot wrestling, a little dab a little bit here in, in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, and just uh, try to bring out a program that they could probably uh, hook up with other instructors also. Because I think the more you learn, the more well-rounded they become, the more open-minded, the less they'll be, they'll be narrow-minded toward other systems. Because it's kind of good to learn different systems that it helps you understand your own system sometimes that you, that you practice in. Uh, you had made a comment out there during the seminar about the, uh, uh, what the true Filipino martial art is. There are many influences that came to the Philippines. And, uh, and so it's, I think it's good to, just to see different uh, culture influences that were in the Philippines at that time, both Indian, Chinese, you know, even Persian at that time. Then came the Spanish. Uh, then came the Americans. It's, uh, Philippines is the only American colony starting in 1899 all the way up to the, when America gave uh, the Philippines their independence in 1946. So uh, they've seen martial art, Mid-Eastern martial art. They've seen uh, Northern Asian martial arts to the Chinese, and they've seen uh, Southern Asian arts through the, through the Indian influence in the Philippines. And the Indian influences have four groups, you know, the Dravidians, Induarians, Mongol, and the Tamils. So those are four major influences there. Plus the fact it's probably one of the few places that has Aztec influence, but most pe Fili people don't know that, even in the Philippines. But because uh, Spain uh, colonized also Mexico at that time. So there was a close relationship between uh, the Philippines and Mexico because Mexico was a Spanish colony and so was the Philippines a Spanish colony for 344 years. So pretty much they have that movement and plus it brought in European methods. Uh, the Spanish brought not only Spanish martial art uh, influence, but they brought also Italian influence in there also. So what was ever sailing on that ship, they sort of cross-trained and that became known as uh, the melee art or the mixture of different arts and they mixed it with many different things and nobody can tell where, you know, where it came from, whether it's more uh, uh, Mid-Eastern or uh, Southeast Asian martial art and then mixed uh, with it, as much as 50, maybe, maybe even 20 percent European martial arts and what came from the New World and that became the Filipino martial arts. Think of a part coaching play in your well, coaching plays an important. I think after you learn the material, then you start to. The coaching is when you're going to help this person through the. You know, you have coaches, you have instructors, you have people who are, are influences in your in your progress through martial art. You're going to learn a little bit from everybody. You know, uh, coaches are the, usually for a competitor. You know, but it could be just for you coaching you through life and. and going through different martial arts systems. So that, I think that's important also that you have that, not just only for a competition, because your, your competition years are maybe 10 at the most, you know, depending what you're competing in. You know. So the coaching does play. I don't think you really have a great fighter unless you had a great coach, because I think they, they go hand in hand, or coaching or trainer, whatever you want to use. You know, and you're always going to use, learn from a variety of different people, I think, if you're smart enough. Somebody will teach a little bit more of this game, and the other person will teach a little bit more of that game. So you're gonna, it's good to uh, put it all together and make it a very cohesive uh, system for yourself. And it's, that's personal also. Teaching out there, it appeared to me as if you're teaching them, the, the other students, not as just students, but to be teachers as well. Yes, because they, they should recognize that you, you draw from many different sources. You just don't draw from your, uh, your base system that you come in. If you draw from many different sources, you're, you're going to grow, you know, and uh, evaluate the, st the strength and weakness of everything you've learned. What's more uh, appropriate for one person might be uh, not as a, appropriate for a, another person. You usually, uh, the systems work to fit your personality and fit to, to fit your uh, physical composition that you have, because we're all different, you know. 
We're born with different agility, born with different balance. Some systems require a lot of agility, a lot of spring, a lot of systems. Some systems require a lot of flexibility. Other systems, you don't have to be as flexible. So you have systems that are what I call long-term. You can use it no matter what age you are. You can use some systems fit you better when you're out of shape, and some systems fit you better when you're in shape. So you're going to draw from many different sources, and you want to stay a student all your life. You know, I think if you, you stop becoming a student, even though you become a teacher, you want to learn from everybody. That's always been my uh, a lot what I try to t preach to my students that you definitely want to learn from everybody. Everybody helps you grow. You mentioned a little bit today the difference, the main difference, or one of the key differences that stand out to you to teaching or instructing or uh, learning training in the martial arts uh, currently nowadays compared to the 1960s or 1970s? I, th I think nowadays people are more open with their knowledge. Is I think back in my days in the, in the 60s, they were more selfish with the knowledge. So they tend to keep things for themselves, keep all the good stuff. Maybe they would teach maybe as much as 50% all of their knowledge and wouldn't hold back 50%. But I like to think that in this day and age in 2009 that people are more open with the knowledge and they, they're more giving and they're less selfish with the knowledge. They tend to give more uh, and I, I like the, uh, the atmosphere now than, than way back in, let's say, in the 60s where people are more secretive, people didn't give as much and uh, I like it that people share more, people cross train more. You learn a little bit from everybody, you know. I, know, I don't think anyone has all the eggs in the basket where they can say that they're the best at this, the best at this. So you kind of learn from everybody. Just like when you go to school, not, not one professor has it all the knowledge. You know, that's why they have departments. Department of Social Studies, Department of Science, Department of, of Math, Department, what, whatever department they have in the college. So you, you're going to learn from a variety of different people. Then you're going to have your specialty, but it's good to learn other fields of uh, expertise from different people. So are you advocating for a university of martial arts? I, I, I would like to say that, yeah. I, I think it's good when people share. You're always going to be good. As you get older, your flexibility is not going to be there. So styles that require great flexibility, you might want to gravitate to maybe an enhanced system. And then you should learn different weaponry system, whether you use actually going to use it for combat or not. It teaches you uh, body motion. It's good for health. It's good for longevity. You know. Uh, gives you an appreciation of a culture, and I think that's more important than, than always uh, on the practical side of being able to fight with it and use it combatively. Because when you do that, it strips it down to the what you can do, and you're going to use what that you excel in. And then, as time goes on, you, you uh, develop a system for yourself, and that's going to change every five years. You know, because your body's different.